Welcome back. It's uh, still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we are set to uh, do justice to the headlines on the pages of the Nisi Press this morning. Jilly Johnson, senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is our guest uh, this morning on Off the Press. Uh, Jilly Johnson, thank you very much for your time, and good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, Kofi, and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Right. Thank God it's Friday. Yes, <laughs> TGI. And happy new month. Yes, same to you. Last time we had you on the program, it was uh, it was way back last month. So thanks for the wish, and I wish you a fantastic month as well. Let's uh, start with a look at the um, headlines on the front page of a Punch this morning. It's a colorful paper, and um, of course, uh, uh, a picture there um, of uh, the gentleman, the young man who was um, found guilty of uh, killing Ini Umorin. And uh, this is a picture taken of him in court, a big one there. It's a life uh, has been cut short. That is a young girl uh, has been cut short unnecessarily. And then also this young man also now has his future uh, up in flames. You know, he's meant to serve uh, two times. One is life imprisonment and one is death by hanging. Of course, as we played the video there earlier, he attempted to escape from court and the authorities descended on him and uh, beat him to pop. Uh, that's what the report said and dragged him out of uh, uh, the court. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. One wonder why young people will get into things like this. 21 years old. Really sad. All right, more from the paper and the big story there. A weakest camp condemns PDP's anti South uh, posture. Six redress. Wiki's camp condemns uh, PDP's anti South posture. Six redress. The writers to that uh, PDP cannot have BOT, a party chairman, others from North. Wiki's loyalists. PDP cannot have BOT, party chairman, others from North. Ours is a democratic party. We adhere to our constitution, says the PDP spokesman. And uh, Lamido backs Atiku Wiki's reconciliation. Wiki's men demand equity, justice, a writer to that story. World Bank commits $8.5 billion to Nigeria, falls 6.7 trillion Naira subsidy. Uh, page 19 has the details. We won't allow Lawan block Buhari's impeachment. This comes from a senator. FG to generate 160 billion Naira from coal and data tax. We had some analysis of this some days ago on the program. Tinubu Shatima, a Babache biting finger that fed him, says Shitu. And more from the uh, the punch, a crime job seekers killer to die by hanging. Kora people hang self for failing examination, sad one. Lagos policemen, sheriffs uh, invade house, destroy 500 million Naira property and more states to procure AK-47 as uh, insecurity worsens. All right, let's go over to the nation this morning and headlines on the front page of the nation. The lead story, 2023 PDP can win without Wiki Atiku tells parties BOT. PDP can win without Wiki Atiku tells the parties BOT. Uh, Buhari lost Rivers, yet won 2015-2019. Runoff raises poses at meeting with uh, candidates. Some details of that meeting between Wiki and Atiku right there in Abuja. Lalong, Lalong leads APC's presidential campaign council. Kiyamo named interim spokesman Musawa deputy. UK court adjourns hearing in Ikwe Madu's case till October 31. Terrorism has not affected food production. The government saying that they created 3.6 million jobs. And uh, KK Meke Folari remains or your APC choice for governor. Or should APC heads for tribunal over a governorship poll? Our headlines on the front page of the nation. Federal government, Google, partner to block uh, subversive YouTube channels and uh, petrol importation. We can't compete with NNPC, uh, says Ipman. We can't compete with NNPC, says Ipman. Over to the leadership on Friday, the big story on the front page of the leadership on Friday. Uh, six weeks after running mate discord in PDP, Atiku finally uh, meets Wike 
to resolve lingering crisis six weeks after running mate discord in pdp article wiki finally meet to resolve lingering crisis and the writers to that set up harmonization committee pdp nwc passes vote of confidence on IU. Uh, XVP appoints Milaye Abuala as campaign spokespersons. Uh, table names Lalong DG Keamo spokesman. More from the leadership on Friday. CSO's kick as FG moves to revive defense company. Ganduje will sign death warrant on Hanifa's killer as commissioner uh, saying that given an update. Equire Madu to remain in UK detention till October 31. China fires missiles in unprecedented drills around Taiwan. And killer of a cry bomb job seeker attempts escape after death sentence. Uh, some of the headlines on front page of the leadership. The final one this morning, Daily Trust with a lead story of Shibajo to military. Account for security expenditure. Or Shibajo to military. Account for security expenditure. Of course, you have uh, an infographic on the progression of budgetary allocation to the Nigerian military, the Navy, Air Force, and Army since 2015. And uh, it has assumed uh, historical and record-breaking proportions, as it had been seen even before uh, this headline. Now, the writers to that story, it says insecurity operatives or security operatives must be ahead of criminals. Uh, canvases increase in local production of arms. Non transparent military spending can create a war economy. Expert. All right. More from Daily Trust. Lalong unveiled as APC presidential campaign DG. Article We can meet to agree or agree to resolve differences in eight years after raising $20 million for Safe School Initiative. FG unveils new plan. Speculators count losses as Naira gains 70 Naira to the dollar in three days. Son kills dad for marrying second wife in Suleja. Asu strike. Kaduna Varsity insists on resumption. Lecturers adamant. Of course, uh, Governor Erufa had had some strong words for them uh, some days ago. And FG to Google. Deny IPOB access to your platforms. So headlines on the front page of... Uh, uh, the Daily Trust. Um, Gina Johnson, good morning once again. Let's start with uh, the big one on uh, the Daily Trust front page. Uh, the Vice President has not really spoken about major national issues since his um, loss at the uh, APC presidential primary. He is saying in this lead story by the uh, Daily Trust um, that the military ought to account for uh, the humongous uh, security expenditure. What are your thoughts on this? 702.52 billion naira spent as supplementary budget since 2015 to date. It's unbelievable, unimaginable. Just imagine if that money has been invested in the economy, direct investment into the Nigerian economy, or this amount of money was invested in building infrastructure or in or this money was invested in education or the healthcare sector. And the unfortunate thing is that we have spent this huge amount of money. This is just supplementary budget. There is the actual defense budget which they have not done because you look at it. Then you begin to wonder what is really going this is federal government. If you now look at the money that has been spent by state government on defense and security in the last seven years, and then you have to what individual Nigerians have paid as ransom to secure their lives and property. And then you know that what the experts are saying, they are just playing to the gallery by saying we have it's already a war economy. Nigeria is already at war. There's no Sutia. We don't need a Sutia to tell us about, about this because this a nation that is not at war, quote unquote, that is spending this huge amount of money on security, 
if you put all the figures together, then you, you, you'll be shocked. You, we, when, when I saw the headline and I looked through the program, I, the first thing I did was just to share this, to share this on my platform. And just say, wow, what? 722 billion plus in seven years. I just remember the last fellas old son or a piece of your own so it's, it's, it's and yet we have not solved the security challenges we have it is practically difficult for you to travel by road it is practically difficult for you to travel by by rail in fact you are not even safe within the vicinity of the federal capital territory which is Abuja. Now, we are people see all over Nigeria. But we all see the way it's, it's being said, nothing will be done because this should not even be coming from the vice president. This should be coming from the National Assembly. In their oversight function, for them to ask questions, we have given you all the resources that are required. Everything the military has asked for has been treated expeditiously by the National Assembly, and Nigerians have not queried whatever amount government has been required for to prosecute the war on terror. However, are we getting the result that commensurate with the investment we are making in fighting war on terror? It's 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 a sad situation. I've told, look, on this issue on the war of terror, I asked my students to develop their mind because they are trying to, to they, are, they are upcoming journalists. I mean, just watch the Lord of War. Watch the Lord of War movie and then by Nikolai Cage. And then you understand um, you follow the money and you know what goes on with this type of money. All right, all right. Sorry. Interesting. Uh, let, let's uh, stick with the Daily Trust and look at our story from Kaduna State, where you know it says Asus Strike Kaduna Vasti insists on uh, resumption of lecturers, uh, resumption rather lecturers adamant, and the paper says the controversy has trailed the resumption order uh, of the Kaduna State University as uh, members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities of the school. Uh, have refused to, to resume classes despite the threat of losing their job. Now, if you remember, J.D. Johnson, the paper also states it here that right. uh, it will be recalled that uh, Governor Nasu Arofai a week ago had threatened to sack the lecturers if they failed to resume classes because they had no dispute with the state government. So, uh, I, I we know that some 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 state universities have uh, been going have been ongoing, you know, with lectures and activities, especially in the southwestern part of. Uh, of, of Nigeria. You can look at states like Ekiti State, Ekiti State University, and so on. Um, uh, also, in, in Kaduna State is saying, the Kaduna State University is saying they're not going back to the classroom. You know, so this is a, is a problem. Um, what are your thoughts on this? And then the whole debate surrounding the, the state-run universities and their lecturers with the federal government. Also, if you remember some days ago saying that uh, this pay rise that uh, the Nimig Briggs Committee had uh, recommended, 180%. The federal government saying we can pay a 100% increase. It has nothing to do with state government, uh, state run universities, so we can't dictate to them, leave them out of this, and also kicking. So, this has been an ongoing debate. Over to you, please. Well, um, the governor should sack them and fire them. That's my take. We run a free draft system. We sign, and then when, you get, when they got employed, they got employed by the state government, not federal government. It's a state institution and not a federal institution. And then if you operate a federal system of government, the Cardinal State University's lecturer had no business joining us to strike. Because it's something that has to do with institutions by the federal government. Their own negotiation should be with the state government. And if the are not engaged in any trade war with their state government, they should go back to school. Last week's in session, like we pointed out, most of the, most of the state schools are in session. It is 
you know, it is pathetic um, to note that the universities are on strike for whatever reason. Universities should not be going on strike. Um, med medical doctors and medical practitioners should not be going on strike. However, we have found ourselves in a, in a sorry situation whereby government cannot keep to the agreement that the government itself signed with, with this various trade unions. My take on this, and this has been a management, that we really need to practice federalism in every aspect and every sector of our lives. And government needs to divest its investment in federal institutions. And it's direct involvement, rather, but give subsidy or whatever. Let each institution run as a semi-autonomous independent body. If the universities that are trained the labor force for the economy cannot be self-sustaining, then they have no business being a university. That's, that will be my take. For us to solve this crisis, crisis, instead of strike, and there's... Government needs to have a fund where schools can assess, but this school should be run like schools are run in the United States of America in, in Great Britain. And then the salary structure shouldn't be the same. And appointments should be tenorized. We appoint you for four years. It should be based on productivity, not life appointment which you have in Nigeria. Nigeria, everything went, goes upside down. That's, that's the challenge we have. Why should a professor in Lagos be earning the same salary with a professor in Colorado Moda? Or with a professor in 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 in, in Fouye, Federal University in, in Oyekiti? They should be earning the same thing. There should be comparative advantage. The cost of living are different. Let these schools compete with one another. Let government finally allow this institution to try. If you operate a university and you have a business administration, you have a business administration faculty, you have a faculty of economics, you have a department of economics, you have a department of business administration, you have a department of finance. You can't come up with template on how to generate revenue. How would you want to help? Sorry about that, Julie Johnson. I'm sure your uh, your um, your your Zoom was. Uh, Hola, don't call me again. Okay, all right. Um, Julie Johnson, are you there, please? Sincere apologies. Hello, Kofi. Yes, yes. You are saying. You are saying. Kofi, I hope you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Please go on. Please go on. We can hear you. Yes, Julie Johnson. You, you, we can hear you. Please go on. All right. While we're trying to get Julie Johnson back, I'm sure his uh, his Zoom was interrupted. It happens to to everyone that you have a Zoom, and then uh, a phone call will come in uh, at such a time. It it happens. Let's let's stick with the with the Daily Trust. Um, uh, Julie Johnson, are you there, please? All right. Uh, another story from this paper happens to have a business twist. Um, Speculators count losses as now gain 70 uh, to the dollar, uh, 70 naira to the dollar in three days. That's a quite um, huge one. I don't know if any currency in the world has gained uh, uh, such a percentage in a short amount of time. Uh, but it says that a few days after, the, after security personnel, this is what Daily Trust writes, a few days after security personnel stormed several BDCs, uh, that's uh, Bureau de Charge or Forex Bureaus, in Abuja, uh, Lagos, and Kano, the Naira has continued to strengthen on the black market, strengthening to 640 uh, to the dollar. For me, it's sometimes strange that we're quoting the black market um, as if it's the official uh, exchange rate. I don't know why we still keep quoting the black market if that is uh, not what is being used to do business around the world. But anyway, um, so it's gone down to 640. Uh, just days after this raid on Bureau de Change hubs in Abuja, Lagos, and Kano. 
The paper writes that recall that at the parallel market last week, the Naira traded at 710 uh, to the dollar, with a new rate indicating the Naira's increase of 70 Naira to the dollar in a matter of days. Although there is a local and global dimension to the pressure under Naira, the demand for foreign exchange of, uh, for goods and services has remained constant. The paper writes, uh, since Monday, August 1, the dollar has strengthened against the U.S., the Naira rather, has strengthened against the U.S. dollar significantly uh, and more easily in all the facets of the foreign exchange uh, market. The Nigerian currency currently uh, strengthened rather on the official market by 0.03%. The settle at uh, 428.88 Naira to the dollar on Monday, according to data on FMDQOTC. So um, it's strange. Uh, Jenny Johnson, are you there, please? All right. Anyway, the exchange rate at the official market, the paper writes, uh, appreciated on Wednesday, uh, 3rd August 2022, by 0.34% to close at 429.2 to a dollar, as against uh, the 430.67 to the dollar recorded on Tuesday, 2nd August 2022. Uh, the opening indicative rate closed at 427.9 uh, dollars on Wednesday. 3rd August 2022 uh, from 427 uh, Naira 75 Kobo to the dollar recorded in the previous trading uh, session. All right. So um, this is what the paper is saying. It says, furthermore, an exchange rate of 444 Naira to the dollar was the highest rate recorded during intra-trading uh, before it settled to 429 uh, per dollar while it traded as low as 414 per dollar intra-trading day um or intraday trading rather so it, it's quite interesting i mean for for me i i would uh, wonder why if if we have um an official market and official rates why we see you keep we keep seeing the papers quoting the black market everybody's talking about the black market it's if it's a parallel market and it's not an official rate it's almost like the, the, the parallel market rate has become accepted as the, the official rate uh, for the Naira. And the official rate is not uh, used by the citizenry. However, if you want to travel, you go to the banks, you want to in, in, uh, transact international business, they don't use the, the parallel market rate or the black market rate. They use the official rate. So, I mean, I wonder why we will be in this situation. Um, I mean... Of course, you can't blame people who don't go to the banks to withdraw uh, or to exchange, you know, Naira for dollars or to get their dollars because most of the banks will tell you they don't have, you know, for, for daily use. They, can, they can't give you, they don't have. Uh, so that's why people go to their boki on the street, you know, and say, hey, uh, give me uh, uh, Naira for my dollar, give me dollars for my Naira. And that's how it works. Um, I don't know if, if it's possible for the authorities to, um, to clamp down uh, on the black marketers and, and basically just uh, shut down that market. Uh, maybe the fear is that it may put pressure on the Naira because then the people who would go to the black market to get the dollar um, would have to turn to the banks or the BDCs. And can they get them from the BDCs? The BDCs as well, are they exchanging the Naira are the official rates or are they exchanging the narrative for dollar at the black market rate? Well, most of them do the black market. I can tell you for free. Yes, I can tell you for free. Most of them do uh, the black market. So it's, it's quite interesting to see. Um, and uh, let's, let's see what happens at the end of the day. Um, if the efforts by the authorities raiding BDC hubs in Lagos, Abuja and Kano will yield uh, any result. All right, we'll take a short break and we'll return with more right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Please stay with us.